Good morning. This is the smallest this room has ever looked. So, uh, good morning. My name is Nancy Hughes Moyer. I have the great honor and privilege of serving as the president and CEO for VOA of Illinois, uh, which is the developer and owner of uh, Hope Manor 2, where you are all standing. Um, before we do anything else, I did want to introduce Sandy, who is not here, uh, but she is a local uh, small business entrepreneur here in Inglewood who has catered uh, today's event. So you do not want to leave here without eating one of her butter cookies, I promise. It will be a transformative experience. So formally, uh, welcome to our Hope Manor 2 campus. It is one of the first campus-style developments in the country uh, that was designed specifically for veteran-headed households and their families and is an example of affordable, supportive housing, I think, at its best. Uh, and it is also part of our larger investment here in Inglewood that we broadly refer to as Hope Manor Village. Uh, first, I want to thank the governor so profoundly, uh, not only for his leadership on this important bill that is being signed today uh, that will really advance the cause of affordable housing across the state, but for choosing Inglewood and Hope Manor too as the place to memorialize this important legislation. He could have picked any place, and we are so grateful that he picked this place, a very, very special neighborhood in our city story of both deep challenges but incredible resilience. I'm grateful that because of the governor, today, Inglewood is the focus of a celebration, a celebration of something positive and good. And I hope that newspapers and news stories for the next 24 to 48 hours talk about Inglewood in a way that makes people happy and think of really positive things. Because this... <laughs> What people don't say nearly often enough is that this is a truly remarkable community filled with really extraordinary people who are strong, creative, tenacious, honorable, and deeply committed to their homes, their community, their city, and their state. And they are an asset to this community and to the city and to the state. There is a lot of hand-wringing uh, that goes on, in many cases rightfully so, about how to address the challenges that do exist here. But much of that debate focuses on all the negatives uh, and ignores the strengths and assets that also exist here. We have been part, VOA of Illinois has been part of the Inglewood neighborhood for many years. And what has become abundantly clear to me is that what's at the heart of the problem here is a problem with density, with population. Over the past 40 years, this community has lost more than 70% of its population, going from 100,000 people uh, in the early 1970s to less than 30,000 today. What we really need to do to turn things around in a meaningful way uh, is to bring people to Inglewood. And what people need is homes. And what businesses need is people in rooftops. We can't have one without the other. So we can argue about all kinds of other strategies, but at the end of the day, we won't really solve them till we bring people and homes to this community. And we aren't going to solve our population problem unless we fundamentally change the narrative about this community and talk about its strengths and its assets and keep investing in its potential. Which brings me to my last point about today's critically important subject, which is affordable housing. It has always been my belief, and it is part of our profound strategy at VOA of Illinois, that affordable housing is a very, very powerful tool in creating and advancing community revitalization. It brings people and density and often replaces vacant land uh, and, and abandoned properties with vibrant, positive developments and activity. And what is least understood about the potential of affordable housing is that it can be a very effective pipeline for home ownership especially in communities struggling with negative perceptions and a desperate need of population density. Our Hope Manor Village strategy is all about moving 
all of the levers needed for meaningful and really durable progress towards community revitalization. High quality affordable housing, real opportunities for home ownership at prices that are within reach to moderate income homes and families, and commercial developments that create activated and vibrant corridors that keep attracting and keeping families here. I need to stress this about affordable housing and its role in community revitalization. It has to be done right and it has to be high quality. And I can say unequivocally and with great enthusiasm that all of the partners here today understand and operationalize uh, that profound truth. So it has to be really high quality that has the right income targeting, that has very thoughtful design, and a real strategy around who it's going to serve and how it's going to integrate those residents into community life. The best compliment anyone ever paid me uh, was at something I actually, they didn't say to me directly, it was a, it was a comment that I overheard during our grand opening uh, for the Hope Manor 2 campus. Candidly, it was a group of bankers uh, that were standing there, and they were standing in our park. And they said, it doesn't look like affordable housing. Standing here, you wouldn't even know you were in Inglewood. You would think maybe you're in Bolingbrook or someplace else, some other suburb like that. And I was both happy and elated because we'd accomplished what we were seeking to do always, which is to not have everybody think they're in whatever they think of negatively about affordable housing. But I was also brokenhearted because why should anything look like affordable housing? Affordable housing should be seen as the asset that it is uh, to all communities and not say something candidly that is profoundly untrue about the people that live there. So as you can see, I'm really passionate about this community, uh, really passionate about affordable housing, uh, but the most important thing is the bill that we're signing today. And without any further ado, I want to introduce an incredibly important person to this bill, an incredibly important person uh, to our state, uh, and somebody who has delivered uh, on his promises to people who are often left behind. It is my deepest honor to introduce to all of you a wonderful governor for this great state of Illinois, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Thank you so much, Nancy. It is great to be back in Englewood, and uh, I want to ask you all a favor. Please eat the butter cookies that are available, because I shouldn't. Um, so, I, and I very much appreciate all of you joining us today. Thank you again, Nancy, for your steadfast leadership of Volunteers of America, Illinois. Your impact truly is evident all across our state, including right here at Hope Manor. And I appreciate all of the time, effort, energy, and truly your dedication to lifting people up uh, to make their lives better, to help their families. I want to welcome the other champions for affordable and accessible housing who have joined us this morning. The sponsors of the bills that I'll sign today, Leader Maddie Hunter, Leader Mike Hastings, Representative Will Gazzardi, and Representative Barbara Hernandez. Truly great leaders in Springfield, but I don't want to leave out the other leaders that are here with us, some with us and some uh, yet to come. Leader Delia Ramirez, Senators Ann Gillespie and Sarah Feigenholtz. Sarah is my own state senator, so I'm very proud whenever I get to be at an event with my own state senator. And Representative uh, Teresa Ma, Sonia Harper is here, uh, the chairwoman of the Illinois Black Legislative Caucus. Um, and I want to recognize also Representative Aaron Ortiz and uh, Representative Marcus Evans. Uh, also, Illinois Housing Development Authority Assistant Executive Director Karen Davis is here, Bob Palmer with uh, Housing Action Illinois, Larry Dawson with Illinois Poverty Fighting Network, uh, John Hayes, and so many other voices for justice that are here in the audience, um, and at least John will be speaking today. Uh, there's a lot to be proud of about the state of Illinois, but here's one more thing to be proud of. In 2020, Illinois was the best state in the nation at getting relief to renters and homeowners, investing more than $320 million to keep 56,000 at-risk families safe at home during the pandemic. That really is something to be proud of. And earlier this summer, I launched a new rental relief package, nearly four times the size 
of last year's. This one is $1.5 billion. And it will serve uh, 20,000 more. It already has served about 20,000 more families. And it will serve tens of thousands more going forward. So we have an awful lot of help that's available to people who need it. Renters in need of assistance can go online right now and apply for free relief through the Department of Human Services at, and I'm going to say this a couple of times for the cameras and everybody else here, at this website, IllinoisRentalAssistance.org. IllinoisRentalAssistance.org. Please encourage people, anybody that you think needs help with their rent or with their home mortgage payment, please have them log in to IllinoisRentalAssistance.org. Uh, because we also have mortgage assistance for people at IDA, and I'm sure that you'll hear a little more about that from Karen. Uh, we are here today to build on our progress, helping families get and keep affordable housing. So yet again today, we have something more to be proud of about our state. Thanks to unanimous bipartisan support in the General Assembly, and especially the leaders and sponsors here with us today, the affordable housing omnibus bill that I'll sign dedicates $75 million of COVID-19 relief money to create new affordable housing developments like the one that we stand in today. But we're going to be able to do this all across Illinois. That's funding for 3,500 new rental units and thousands of families whose lives will be changed for the better as a result of the work of the General Assembly. We're also extending for another five years the Illinois Affordable Housing Tax Credit that encourages private investment in affordable housing. In addition to that, this legislation creates a county-led special assessment program uh, across all of our counties for new properties to provide yet another incentive for affordable housing development. Together, these are critical tools not only to address the need of more affordable housing, but also to address many of its root causes. Homelessness, support for our veterans community, support for domestic violence survivors, and others who are most vulnerable among us. Of course, having a roof over your head is only one component of shelter. It's also having heat on a frigid night in the winter or cooling your home in a dangerously hot summer day. So last year, during some of the worst moments of uncertainty during the pandemic, we increased access to our Illinois Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, LIHEAP, when we launched the Help Illinois Families Initiative, again, in the midst of some of the worst moments of the pandemic. That temporary program not only opened up greater eligibility for more low-income residents, but it also made LIHEAP available regardless of immigration status. That's the first time that's ever been the case in the state of Illinois. As a result of that work, more than 289,000 families received $343 million in assistance paying their utility bills. Today, I'm signing legislation, thanks again to the General Assembly, that makes those changes, those temporary changes we made during the emergency and the worst moments of the pandemic, we're making that permanent. For those families still facing economic hardship, I want you to know that even more help is on the way with additional LIHEAP funding in the new program year that launches in September of this year, so just about a month and a half from now. These two new laws are another step forward for state government on our collective mission to ensure that all of our residents have the basic foundation upon which to build a successful future for themselves and for their families. And I want to again thank the entire General Assembly for making that possible and especially the leaders who are behind me today. So with that, I want to uh, introduce our very hardworking and dedicated Illinois Housing Development Authority Assistant Executive Director, Karen Davis. Karen. Thank you, Governor. 
On behalf of the Illinois Housing Development Authority Board, Executive Director Fouts, and our tremendous staff at IDA, I would like to thank Governor Pritzker and all of Illinois' strong housing advocates, along with the Illinois General Assembly, for their diligent work and foresight to pass this very important legislation. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, Illinois was already facing a shortage of safe, affordable housing for extremely low-income households. Those earning well below the area median income or about $28,000 annually for a four-person household in Cook County. The National Low-Income Housing Coalition estimates nearly 70% of these renters are severely cost burdened, meaning they spend more than half of their income on housing and are more likely to sacrifice other necessities like healthy food and health care to pay their rent. Then the COVID-19 pandemic hit, which triggered a severe recession, especially among low-income workers, which amplified food and housing insecurity. In total, Illinois needs to add an additional quarter of a million units of affordable housing to meet the current demand, which Ida is certainly up to the task. Our mission is to finance the creation and preservation of affordable housing throughout the state. We accomplish that by utilizing a variety of state and federal resources to fund multifamily developments offering rents well below market rate. Since 2016, Ida has leveraged over $5 billion in resources to create or preserve 21,500 units of affordable housing for Illinois families. For Illinois seniors, Illinois veterans, and persons with disabilities. House Bill 2621 is, tr is a tremendous step forward in helping Ida continue our mission to provide affordable housing for Illinois residents. I want to applaud the sponsors of the bill the Illinois General Assembly and Governor Pritzker for realizing the critical need for housing and taking action to address housing disparities in the state of Illinois. One vital component of the legislation is the extension of the Illinois Affordable Housing Tax Credit Program. One of the key state programs to provide affordable housing by attracting private investment in the form of donations to qualified nonprofit housing developments. Since 2021, since 2001, excuse me, the Illinois Affordi Affordable Housing Tax Credit Program has created or preserved over 21,000 Illinois units, which has supported an estimated 39,000 jobs, 2.8 billion in wages, and generated over 361 million in state and local revenue. In addition, the bill provides Ida with an additional $75 million to help fund low-income housing tax credit developments through the new COVID-19 Affordable Housing Grant Program. The low-income housing tax credit is the single largest driver of the creation and preservation of affordable housing throughout the United States. The additional funding will help Ida create and or preserve an additional 3,500 affordable rental homes and apartments by 2024. The funds will be prioritized for both disproportionately impacted areas and those located in areas of opportunity helping to provide increased housing opportunities for those most in need. There is a real need for more high quality, sustainable and accessible housing opportunities throughout the state. The COVID-19 Affordable Housing Grant Program, extension of the Illinois Affordable Housing Tax Credit and additional measures in Housing Bill 2621 will be important tools as we continue to tackle this issue moving forward. On behalf of our board and everyone at Ida, I would like to again thank the governor and the Illinois General Assembly for making this landmark legislation possible. 
We look forward to working with everyone here today as we implement and administer the new housing resources. Thank you for supporting affordable housing in Illinois. I would like to ask Senator Manny Hunter to now come for a few words. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everyone. I am so pleased to be here uh, for the signing of this affordable housing omnibus, uh, also known as House Bill 2621. I am also honored to uh, be here with my colleagues who helped me get this legislation through, uh, Senators Feigenholtz, where's it, Senator Feigenholtz and Ann Gillespie. Let's give them a round of applause because um, We, we have literally worked day and night for the past several years to get this piece together. And, and we had so many housing advocates and, and so many people um, is here to help us make it possible. Without them, this today would not be possible. The COVID-19 pandemic was brutal on, all, on many industries and severely worsened the housing insecurity pe for people across the state who are already facing thousands of, of, of risk, at, at risk of being evicted. I think I had too much coffee this morning. <laughs> Which is why we created this legislation. House Bill 2621 was created, has created several monetary incentives for residential developers to create affordable housing in the state with multiple components aimed to strengthen our affordable housing uh, law and to promote diversity and equity in our state's housing stock. Specifically, this measure creates um, the COVID-19 affordable housing grant program, which will supplement affordable housing development and, and that qualifies for federal tax credits throughout the state so that we can better um, leverage dollars, federal dollars and private dollars to create even more affordable housing. Our legislation also includes property tax for developments um, that provide affordable housing units through a, a reduced, uh, a reduction in assessed value of newly constructed multifamily developments, which agreed to set aside 20% of those units for low income renters in areas with low affordability for a period of 30 years. This is intended for diversity, high opportunity areas. Um, a similar program would offer a reduction in assessed value for newly constructed or rehabilitated rental property if the owner commits to at least 15% of multifamily buildings um, rehabilitation for existing structures uh, to be offered at affordable renting rental units. Uh, further, the measure um, improves existing programs related to affordable housing and strengthen current laws, including expanding the eligibility for affordable housing tax credit for homes whose gross income is at or below 60% of the area medium income for those that are at or below 120% uh, area medium income by expanding existing tax incentives. We hope to keep families together in their homes and their communities. I believe this legislation is a key component to helping communities stay afloat in the midst of the COVID-19 chaos and the way to keep families in their homes. I am grateful for the work my colleagues and I did and all the support we received, especially from advocates such as Bob Palmer, I think he's here, uh, and Housing Action Illinois developers like Illinois Housing Council, housing providers, notably the realtors, uh, and those assessors like the Cook County Assessor's Office. Thank you, Governor Prisker, for seeing this thing through, and I look forward to getting this bill implemented. Thank you very much. And at this time, I'd like to introduce my house sponsor, Representative Will Gazzardi. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, good morning, everyone. 
It's so great to be here uh, for this historic day and with this incredible group of leaders and advocates. Um, I won't reiterate the, the tremendous thanks that are owed to the great group of legislators who are here, to the incredible list of organizations that the governor and the senator just mentioned. I would only also just add uh, a tremendous debt of gratitude to the staff who helped us put this bill together, who I see in the room today. <laughs> Ashley Stead from the Senate and Kat Bray from the House. Uh, we're just so grateful to you guys for all of the sort of unseen hard work that you do every day. Thank you so much. Um, in, the, in the housing community, uh, in the community of advocates for affordable housing, we often say housing is a human right. It's a phrase you hear us say a lot. Uh, but of course it's not. Uh, I think we, we, we don't really mean it when we say it. What we mean is we wish housing were a human right, or if we lived in any kind of fair and decent society, housing would be a guaranteed human right. But of course, in the United States here in Illinois, housing is a commodity. It's bought and sold and rented at prices determined by the market. And if you can't afford it, there's no guarantee that you get it. You simply don't. You can either pay the price the market sets or you don't have it. And the trouble with treating housing like a commodity instead of like a right is that it's fundamental to so many of the other rights that we believe people ought to be entitled to. Without stable housing, you can't have stable education if you're moving from school to school every six months because your folks can't afford their home. You can't have a stable access to economic opportunity. You can't have stable communities. You can't even have stable health care. As, as Leader Ramirez, one of the great housing champions in the legislature, says all the time, how could people shelter at home during COVID if they don't have a home, if they don't have shelter? Housing is connected to health outcomes, too. So uh, there's no excuse in 2021 for, for people in the state of Illinois to be living under viaducts, to be living out of their cars, to be living out of a duffel bag. There's no excuse. And, and it's no secret what the answer is either. The answer to unhoused people is housing. It's not complicated. If we have unhoused people, let's build them housing and put them in homes, provide them the supportive services like we see here to keep people in their homes and to access those other important rights. Um, housing ought to be a human right. And, and what we said with this bill today, the legislation that you see before you today that we're signing, um, is an incredibly important step toward making sure that everyone in Illinois can be housed. What we're saying is that yes, housing may be a commodity, but it's time for government to step in and make sure that the prices of that commodity are within reach for every family who needs it. We are tipping the scales. With this bill, with this bill, government is putting its finger on the scales of the free market. We are saying that we are going to create incentives, we're going to reduce the taxes, we're going to increase uh, access to capital for developers to create housing that people can afford in every community across the state of Illinois. It's an incredibly important step toward that ultimate goal, that goal that we should all be mindful of and all be working toward, of ultimately making housing a guaranteed right for everyone in the state of Illinois. This legislative session, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be the chair of the new housing committee in the Illinois House. And I've represented for the past seven years a community that has grappled with enormous challenges of gentrification and displacement and seen tens of thousands of families pushed out of their homes as a result of a changing neighborhood. So through my role representing that community, through my role as chair of the housing committee, I can tell you that stable housing is a vital need for hundreds of thousands of Illinoisans, and today we take a vital first step toward providing that housing. I'm so proud to have been a part of this bill. I'm so proud to see it signed into law today, and I thank you all so much for being here with us this morning. And, and with that, I, I do want to bring up uh, the sponsors of our other vitally important piece of legislation today. Uh, Senator Hastings is going to come and discuss Senate Bill 265, which is uh, about expanding that LIHE program. It's an amazing bill. I'm very excited to introduce the senator. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, everybody. First, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's here today for coming. Today is a great day, not, just not on the affordable housing end 
But um, my name is Senator Mike Hastings. I'm the chairman of the Senate Energy and Public Utilities Committee. We've been hard at work since uh, COVID started, and I want to say thank you very much first uh, to Governor Pritzker. His office and the interaction that they've had with the Senate Energy and Public Utilities Company um, before COVID, through COVID, and after COVID has been nothing but remarkable. Um, communication in government is always a good thing, especially when it comes to energy policy. Uh, what we found throughout COVID is that folks are going to have to make a tough decision on what bills they're going to have to pay. And after we've seen a lot of people in Illinois become unemployed because of COVID, they had some really, really tough financial times. And so what's important is for government, government to step in and to provide assistance to those in need, and that's what Senate Bill 265 does, is that it expands the low-income housing, energy, and affordability program, and it also expands the percentage of income payment plan program as well. As the governor stated, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars have been provided in assistance throughout our emergency program. We're codifying that program into law today, which is great. <laughs> We prioritize applications for families with children under six. One thing that the governor noted was, regardless of whether you're a citizen or you're not a citizen of this country or this state, you should not be denied heat. You should not be denied basic rights. Yeah. I'm really proud of this legislation. What I'm really proud of is our coll my colleagues that are here today. Um, Senator Feigenholt, Senator Gillespie, Senator Hunter, our House representatives um, that are all here today. I want to say thank you to them as well. But what I want to say is to the, the young people in the back. So I brought uh, my interns here, which are students in the AP um, government class at Lincoln Way East High School. And they, they range from uh, Rich Township High School. We talk about what's good in government. And I want you all to listen to this. These two bills today, whether it's providing affordable housing to people who can't afford housing, or people who are living under a viaduct, as Representative Gazzardi said, or somebody that can't afford their energy bill. This is why we do what we do. And this is why you're learning what you're learning, because one day we're all not going to be here, OK? You will be here to lead our state, and you'll be here to lead our country. So take note. This is what government's about, and it's about helping people. God bless you all. Representative, I apologize. Representative Hernandez, I just want to introduce the, the House sponsor. She's phenomenal. I asked her if there's any monikers that I can introduce her by, but I'll just say she's the extraordinary, the remarkable, and the heroic Representative Hernandez. Thank you, Leader. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Good morning. I'm really excited to be here with all of you. It's honestly, it's w my first bill signing of my own bill, so I'm really excited. So thank you. Thank you, Governor, for allowing me to have this opportunity. In just a few short months, temperatures will drop, heating bills will rise, and maintaining utilities will become a, a serious concern for working families in the state of Illinois. We are here today to make sure those families receive the help they need and deserve. It's an honor to join my colleagues and as well as Governor Pritzker to see such significant progress be made official. A few months ago, Senator Hastings and the Community Organizing and Family Issues Organization, also known as COFI, yeah. <laughs> thank you for being here, um, came came to me requesting for their support to join them in the fight um, and just protect families, working families, undocumented immigrant families that have worked their whole life to, to have a family of their own here in the state of Illinois. However, they did not have the luxury of being able to apply for this program. Now they do. Because of this, this will save lives. This will allow families to be able to keep their homes uh, warm, to be able to pay for uh, a place to, to call their own and be able to just, you know, spend some time, quality time. As you heard with my colleagues, they have uh, made it sure that they can stay in their home. But the other part is making sure it's um, being able to keep a heat underneath the roof. So I'm really excited to be here. Now that the governor is going to codify into law, we can look back at months of work as success for both us as lawmakers, as advocates, organizations, 
before us and everybody in the state of Illinois. So who wants their govern government to work for everybody and not just a privileged few. Yes. This law will not just keep people healthy and comfortable. Once again, it will save lives. As a legislator, days like today, I, this is what I work for. This is what I love to do. After devastating impacts of COVID-19, passing immediate measures to provide financial aid to those in priority, I am so proud that this law will fulfill that and it will make sure that families, once again, have the, the, the resources, the services that they need, that they deserve. So thank you once again to everybody, and thank you, Kofi, for allowing me, and Leader Hastings, and Governor Prisker for everything, and my colleagues, so thank you. And at the moment, I would like to introduce Bob uh, Palmer. Hi, I'm Bob Palmer. I'm the Policy Director at Housing Action Illinois. We're a statewide advocacy and capacity building organization that works to make sure that everyone in Illinois has an affordable place to live, especially people with the lowest incomes. And working with a coalition of groups, including the Illinois Housing Council, uh, Enterprise Community Partners, Met Palm Planning Council, and Community Investment Corporation, we worked with uh, Senators Hunter, Gillespie, Feigenholtz, Reverend Gazzardi, and many others to develop House Bill 2621, the omnibus legislation that's being signed here today by Governor Pritzker. What's so great about this omnibus legislation is that it's really comprehensive and offers uh, incentives and resources in all types of markets and communities in Illinois. For example, if there is an owner of a small apartment building here in Englewood who's trying to figure out how to put a new roof on their home or improve their heating and cooling system and keep the rents affordable, provisions in the bill are going to help them get the financing they need to make those improvements to the building and keep the rents affordable. In communities that like uh, Representative Gazzardi and Senator Feigenholz represent that are losing affordable housing and there's a lot of market rate development going on, there's incentives in the bill to create more affordable housing. In communities that like Senator Gillespie represents where development costs are high and there's limited land availability, there's resources and incentives in the bill that will make it easier and more attractive to develop affordable housing. And then going in, into downstate Illinois or southern um, Illinois, if somebody's trying to develop uh, housing for low-wage workers in a community like uh, Peoria or in southern Illinois trying to develop housing for people who are homeless or seniors or people with disabilities, there are resources and incentives in this bill to address those problems. So we're very excited to be here today that is being signed into law. We thank all our supporters in the General Assembly and our uh, coalition uh, partners, and uh, we look forward to continuing to work with everyone in this room to get to the point that Representative Gazzardi talked about where housing is actually implemented as a human right in Illinois. So, thank you. And I'm going to uh, invite next up Donna Carpenter. Good morning, everybody. My name is Donna Carpenter, and I'm also a part of Kofi Power Pack of Illinois, and I'm also a resident of uh, Inglewood as well. I'm a parent, grandparent, a caregiver. Uh, I've been involved with Kofi since 2006, and it's an honor and a pleasure to stand here before you guys to say thank you to Governor Prisker, Representative Hernandez, and Senator Hastings. This has been a long time coming. It's been a struggle. I'm a witness to it. I know what it is to be without light, heat, gas, all of that. I've been there and I've done it. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is going to help a lot of people. Not not only will this help a lot of people across Illinois, it will help my family as well. So thank you, Governor Prister, for all your hard work and your dedication to Illinois. Thank, thank you. you. Who am I to John Hayes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John, and I first want to thank the governor and all the legislatures. I want to also thank uh, Hope Manor and Volunteers of America and all of you who have come to uh, share this great experience. 
So I've been tasked with the opportunity of sharing my experience while a resident here at Hope Manor. Um, I want to tell you that uh, I experienced some brief homelessness, and I reached out to Volunteer of America. And I've been helped in so many ways. Uh, my experience as a resident has been received with greatness and appreciation. And I want to say what they provided for me here was not only safe and affordable housing, but they treated me holistically, yeah. meaning that they treated my mind, my body, and my soul. Yeah. Yes. So I am forever grateful for that. While here as a resident, I went back to acquire my bachelor's of nursing degree at the University of Chicago, uh, at the University of Illinois here in Chicago. So as today, I speak that I'm an employed registered nurse, and all of that has to do. So, Governor, and all of you, I want to thank you for that opportunity. You know, and I just want to make, uh, let you know that I've always received this as a partnership that I could not have achieved any of this without wonderful people who have guided me along this path. So I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, I'm happy to take any questions from members of the media and, of course, the spot Senate and the House sponsors. I'm sure will be happy to answer any questions as well. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a veteran of the building, too. I'm glad that he spoke of what he's been through. 
but uh, I've been through some things too. But um, I started working in a campaign from this building. Her name is London Dixon. You might not but uh, I want to say uh, Barack Obama's library is right down the street, though. So, yeah, I go by that several times. <coughs> People putting together the streets and all that. How long will it be before they break ground? I have to admit I don't know the answer. The question was how long before they break ground on the uh, library. Uh, well, there you go. This fall. This fall. Thank you very much. No, thank you, everyone. Thank you.